الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي جعل يوم الجمعة سعيدا ليامه ولا نعبد ولا نستعين إلى عيه وغلدي فردا صلاة الجمعة بخاله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا ندي للصلاة من يوم الجمعة فسعوا إلى ذكر الله وزار ضعيف والصلاة على محمد سيد العالم وعلى آله وأصحابه الكرام All praise is due to Allah who gave Friday's priority over all other days. Neither worship nor seek the assistance of any other except that of Allah alone, who has made the Juma prayer obligatory in all Muslims by saying, O believers, whenever you are called to the Juma prayer, hasten to the mosque and remember Allah in good business. And we send countless blessings on the Holy Prophet Muhammad who is the spiritual leader of all humanity and on his offsprings and on his honorable companions. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijah. Lanasi ta'amaruna bil ma'rufi. You are the best of the people evolved for mankind, enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong, and believing in Allah. The Quran also refers to the Muslims as the best of people sent to the universe in order to do good and to prevent others from committing wrong. The Holy Quran in the 22nd Surah and the 41st Ayat is very significant and sum up the chief objectives of the Islamic State as founded by the Prophet وسلم, regarding the duties of the Muslims. The first, the first part of the first Ayat or verse relates to the Salat and the Zakat, which enables the Muslim to practice in the actual life principles of fraternity, equality, liberty and justice, and obedience to the head of state. The first part of the second ayat or verse regards the Muslims as the best people, and as such should be incapable of doing wrong. They are therefore required to persuade others to do good and to restrain them from committing wrong. Thus, this little Islamic state was at perpetual war with the forces of tyranny, wickedness, and godliness in order to emancipate mankind from the bondage, whether physical or intellectual. <laughs> but this jihad was not fought for personal aggrandizement or national glorification. It was fought only for the establishment of the rule of Allah and for ending man's tyranny over men and man's injustice and inhumanity to mankind. <clears throat> I want to uh, start this khutbah off by saying that I do not celebrate the New Year's in January. I want to remind everybody that I'm a Muslim, and therefore the calendar that we go by is by the lunar calendar. It is not by the solar calendar. And I also want to begin the khutbah by saying that in reference to the year 2022, the significance of this year 
is in relationship to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu When he said that a mujaddid would come every 100 years, indicating that this deen, the deen of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, would go through a reformation period. And so therefore, the significance of 2022 is in relationship to the last great empire which fell in 1922. And so officially in that particular sense, we can say that the Reformation period has begun. The first thing that we need to do is we need to fix our minds in such a way will we stop apologizing for the Sharia? We need to commit ourselves and starting this year, 2022, that we will no longer apologize for the Sharia. Because if we apologize for the Sharia, then it is an indication that our Iman is weak, and I say that in the least, and it is probably more so an indication that not only is there hypocrisy in the heart, but even an indication of the state of Kufa. And the Prophet Wasallam, he stated that he who summons the people to the Jahaliyyah will be amongst the companions of the fire. Even if he fasts, even if he prays, and even if he claims to be a Muslim. And so therefore, to apologize for the Sharia is a lacking of Iman in the heart and could be a clear indication of a state of Kufa. But there are some things that I want to point out some successful things that took place this year. And so you can say that this uh, khutbah is the state of the ummah. First of all, I want to point out that we were able to establish, <coughs> we were able to establish the national policy. <coughs> And this national policy gives us a foundation. You know, Imam Jamil used to always say that the problem with Kufa is that they're more organized. And that was an indication of saying that the Muslims are not organized. But the fact now that we have a national policy that gives us a sense of organization. And it also gives us a sense of government because this national policy is the same national policy that was established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in reference to the legislation coming from the Quran. It is the same national policy that was established by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in reference to the decisions that he made. And it is the same national policy that was established by the Khulifa Rashidun those rightly guided caliphs who established a state of continuity in reference to that which was established by Allah and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so therefore, this national policy is an indication, a clear indication of the beginning of the Reformation period. It is also a national policy that became almost obsolete in this country approximately 48 years ago. So it hasn't been used in 48 years, at least not to my knowledge. And the reason why I uh, felt that it was sufficient in terms of the revival of this policy is because of the fact that I've, in the last 40 years, in the policies that I've looked 
or looked at in terms of the country. I've seen nothing that is closer to the system that was established by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa in this country. I've seen nothing that was closer than this particular policy. And so therefore my position has always been if it's not broke, don't fix it. In other words, we should have continued with this policy even after the dismantling of the Dal Islamic movement in 1982. Unfortunately, we didn't, but now the policy is back. Number two, alhamdulillah, we reestablished the original Imam Jamil basketball riyadh. The reason why I call it the original Jamil basketball riyadh because along with it, we've also established or reestablished the Islamic news from 1995 where we gave the history of the riyadh going all the way back to the Dal Islamic movement. When we used to call it the Islamic games and then we used to have it at the, uh, the last week in May. And once the movement had dismantled, then it shifted over to Imam Jamil. Once we uh, selected him as the leader and we wanted to continue with the effort, then he began to move the Riyadh to August. And for the first couple of years, it was held at his masjid. And then after it being held at his masjid for the first couple of years, there was a request to bring it back to New York. And this opened up a new era to move the Riyadh around. It also opened up the aspect of the name itself. That's when we started calling it the Riyadh. Actually, the name Riyadh was given by Imam Jamil. And so basically that history we have that history, we revived it, that will, that will be out there in terms of the advertisement along with the flyer. So alhamdulillah for that we've been able to revive Imam Jamil's national riyadh. Number two, we've also been able to follow up with the traditional banquet. And we have the flyers out in terms of what we're going to be talking about. And basically the flyer says, it talks about the, the Muslims or the path of the Muslims in America. And this is going to be very important because of the fact that we need to sit down and talk. And when I say we need to sit down and talk, I would like to talk about the problems worldwide. I would like to talk about what's going on in Palestine. I would like to talk about the situation that takes place in China where there's two million Muslims who are in concentration camps. But I can't talk about these things because of the fact that before you can, be talk, can talk about that which is going on abroad, you have to deal with what is going on in your own backyard. And what is happening here in America, in our own backyard, is that we have been subjected to racism. And I'm not talking about racism outside of Islam. I'm talking about racism from within inside of Islam. And for those who don't understand what I'm saying, then I suggest that you go to YouTube and you listen to a khutbah or you listen to a lecture that is given by uh, Sheikh Abdul, Abdullah Hakim Quick. And he gives this uh, lecture in reference to what is called the real black eye. And in that lecture, he points out a very significant fact. And that is right here in America, we have been subjected to racism within Islam. People are using their economics, their economic power to subject, to diminish, to reduce another group of people in order to use them for their service. 
In other words, the sadaqah is not being given anymore for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it's being given in the sense of power now. People are playing power in their economics. So they want to keep people down. I've been asked questions in, in reference to jobs. Do you have some of your people, can they come to our houses and clean our toilets and things of that particular nature? This is the type of stuff that's taking place here in 2022. After all the changes that we've gone through as a people, the fight for freedom, the fight for the Emancipation Proclamation, the fight for what they refer to as civil rights, the position of not riding on the back of the bus anymore, but riding on the front of the bus. All these things that took place prior to our, most of us reverting back into Islam, and then we revert back into Islam only to embrace the concept of racism, only to be in a position where some, pe some people are trying to reduce us down to the level of servantship for them using the economics. The first thing that I have to say in reference to the people that are allowing this to be done is where is your faqir? And when I say faqir, I'm talking about what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi said, that fuqara is his pride. Where's your faqir? Where's your sense of pride? How can you allow somebody to reduce you down to a level where you become their servant simply because they got more money than you? The Prophet Wasallam did not like beggars. He didn't like beggars. Two men came to him one time and they were begging. And Rasulullah Wasallam, he went and he got two axes and he came back and he gave it to the men and he said, Better that you go and chop down some trees and then sell the wood than to become a beggar. So begging in Islam is not something that is good. So what we are talking about is, if you want the respect, the respect that is due to you, then you have to start thinking in the capacity of economic empowerment, economic independence. It means that you have to look at the aspect of trying to get a hold of the axe and those brothers who are sincere in terms of their sadaqah, those brothers who really want to help, those brothers who are seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have some wealth, then you should start to channel that wealth, utilize that wealth in terms of helping your brother to be able to help himself. Not just to put him on welfare, but to put him in a position where he can do things for himself. Give him the axe in the same way that Rasulullah sallallahu gave those brothers those axe and told them, go sell the wood. Better for you that you do this than to be a beggar. This is very important because unless we think in the capacity of economic empowerment, Unless we think of the capacity of economic independence, then we will, be, we will continue to be subjected to this racism based on economics where people will use money and influences of money to reduce us down to a level of servantship for them, where we become their servants instead of the servants and the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we got to do some talking. We got to talk about the problems in the fact that we've lost a whole generation of young men who are out there addicted to drugs. We got to sit down and talk about that. We got to talk about the solutions. We have to talk about the enormous rate of divorce that is taking place among this same group of people. Because divorce creates a situation where the family becomes dysfunctional. And if the family becomes dysfunctional, then the community becomes dysfunctional. And if the community becomes dysfunctional, then the nation, the ummah, becomes dysfunctional. 
So therefore, we, may, we need to address these problems. We need the whole workshops on why there's so many divorces that are taking place. We need the whole workshops and why our young brothers and sisters are becoming addicted to drugs. We need the whole workshops on how to become, how to, how to give or bring up a sense of economic empowerment so that we are not put in a position where we become the servants of other Muslims as opposed to being the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the benefit, that is the reason why in 2022, in May, May 29th, we will sit down with the, with the leadership, we will sit down with each other. Brothers will sit down with brothers, sisters will sit down with sisters. The leadership will sit down with the leadership and then we'll all come together as one in a workshop to somehow be able to solve these problems. Because part of leadership is developing plans to solve problems. We have to get out of the whole concept of these flowery discourses, of being able to talk, being able to rap, but not coming up with a plan. Let 2022 be the beginning of action and not just talk. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi he said, Min tashiba bi kawman, fahuwa minhu. He who emulates the people is of them. It is time to make a decision. Do we want to be of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions? Or do we want to be of the Ummah or do we want to embrace the awliya of the Tagut? Because there's no in-betweens. And we have to understand that. One of the reasons that I have problems with the fact that we've been subjected to people with their money is that the same people who, are, who have been putting us into a position of slavery with their money are also the same people who have embraced as their awliyas as the Targut. So the Targut is using them to put us into a position or to take us back into the position of slavery. The only way we can emancipate ourselves from that is to embrace the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And embracing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be more than just talk. It has to go within the hadith that I just uh, quoted to you. An Umar radiallahu anhu, an Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min tashiba bi kawman, is related by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he who emulates the people is of them who do we emulate because remember that Ibn Khaldun said that the vanquished always tend to take upon the characteristics of the vanquisher so it's a question of whether you consider yourself to be vanquished, you've submitted to becoming vanquished, and that your awliya is the awliya of the Targu, and therefore there's no fight anymore, and so you begin to adopt the characteristics of the Targu, you begin to ab adopt the characteristics of Kufa, you begin to embrace their thoughts, words, deeds, and everything else that comes along with it, or you follow the hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he said, Min tashiba bi kawman fahuwa minhu. He who emulates the people is of them, so that you begin to emulate the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You begin to emulate the community of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You begin to emulate the Khulifa Rashidun. You begin to emulate uh, the, the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you institute the same system that Allah and his messenger alayhi wa salatu salam have instituted. <coughs> Once we do that, then we become them. But you can't expect to become them if you do not take upon their characteristics. Again, min tashiba bi kawman fahuwa minhu. He who emulates the people is of them. We have to emulate them. We have to act like them. We have to move like them, in order to think like them, 
in order to have the same reflexes that they had so that when the problems begin to hit us, when the problems become uh, uh, come in front of us, we can be, begin to confront those problems in such a way that they did because we have the same ideology. Ideology means that we, we think the same way that they thought. Why? Because we're practicing, we're emulating them. We're not just talking about them, we're emulating them. We're not just walking the path, or rather we're not just talking the path, but we're walking the path. Very, very important. I mentioned these programs in closing out because of the fact that these are all clear, uh, clear indications of a new start. And I would be remiss also if I did not mention the fact that we will have our national summer camp. We will have our national summer camp under the category of the new Dal Islamic movement. It is now national. It's no longer a local summer camp. It is a national summer camp. So we revived basketball riata, we revived the national policy, and we've been able to do this in approximately about a year and a half. And so alhamdulillah, we are on time. It is a good start. Again, the only mentality that I call the Muslims to begin to embrace is that mentality of not apologizing anymore for the Sharia. <coughs> Be prepared to defend it. Be prepared to be able to explain it. Be prepared to understand it. And if we do not understand it, then we need to learn it. That is part of our, our responsibility. We should never let anyone take the Sharia and hold it up and then begin to call us terrorists. And we're not prepared to argue that point when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He commands us to argue with them. And, the, and, the, and that which is better, those words that, that which is better. So we should always be prepared, we should always be enlightened to the level where we're prepared to argue the Sharia, to explain it properly, and to be able to defend it, defend it in the sense of being able to give the dialogue to such a degree where you can show and prove that the Sharia, the system of the Sharia is the best system the best system, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says here in the Quran, in closing out, قُمْتُمْ قَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ نُقْرِجَا لِنَسِي تَعْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْحَوَنَا عَنِ الْمُنْكِرِ وَتُمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best of the people, evolved for mankind, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong, and you believe in Allah. We can't be the best of people unless we follow the best of people. And the only way we can follow the best of people is to adopt the system and the characteristics that the best of the people have. And that is the purpose of reviving this national policy and everything that comes along with it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us and help us in our endeavor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, brothers, I suggest that even the brothers that came in late that you read uh, Sheikh Abdullah Hakim Quick's uh, discourse. I believe it's still on YouTube. It's called uh, The Real Black Eye. Very profound discourse. Everyone should read it because it took me a while to begin to accept the fact that we do have racism in Islam going on right here in America. And we have to call it what it is. Now maybe those brothers, you know, who are practicing this racism don't realize it, but I'll tell you, not too long ago, 
maybe about a year, year and a half ago, I was approached. Imam, do you have some people who could come to our houses and clean our toilets? You see, check out what the Sheikh is saying. The Sheikh Abdullah is saying how this thing has evolved into a form of racism, which is even deeper than the racism that we came out of prior to our embracement of the Dean of Allah, subhanahu wa It's going on. We've allowed it to get out of hand and out of control to such a, a level that, you know, they, they just feel, you know, because they're economically superior to us, that we have to submit. That is why we got to come to this conference in 2022, because we're going to have workshops. We're going to sit down and talk about economic empowerment. We got to do it. We got to become economically independent. We can't get in that position anymore. We're dependent on others because, you know, it, it, what happens is <coughs> they use this as a means <coughs> of defining their superiority over us. That's what's going on. They use this as a means of defining their superiority over us. And as I said before, and I continue to say that I've gone too many years, even prior to being Muslim, you know, taking the position of Rosa Parks that I'm not riding on the back of the bus anymore. I'm riding on the front of the bus. I didn't go through all that to come into Islam and then go back to the back of the bus again. And so that's why I, I, I turn to brothers and I say, where's your fakir? Where's your pride, man? Because the Prophet said, that's the one thing you can have pride in. Fukura is my pride. To the point where, you know, you realize that somebody is using their economics, their money, to try to reduce you down to a level of an inferior individual, then your position is, is that you know then that you have to become independent. You have to work toward the developing economical institutions that will make you independent enough so that the people won't use their flutes and their money as a means of controlling you. Because that is what is taking place here in America today. And as I said before, if, you, if I didn't articulate it properly, then go on YouTube and look up Sheikh Abdullah Hakim quick, and he gives a very profound lecture on it in terms of what he refers to as the real black eye. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu and Asla in a hoo, when a stock or ruhu, when Lumino be not all hollow away. Now we belay Minshuri and Fusina, Women Sayati, Ahmalana, Munya the law who follow Moodle of Law, Women Yuli who follow Hadi of Law, when a shadow and lay Ilaha illa law. ونشهد أن محمد عبد رسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم كم صلى الله عليه وسلم الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت صلاة قد قامت صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله